Well, that should be a familiar theme song, and that is, of course, the intro to our resident motion picture reviewer. His name is Michael Snyder. He's out there in Hollywood, USA, where they make all those movies. Hi, Michael. Hi, Alex. Uh, and uh, we're rolling into December. And, uh, yeah, you know, a few award contenders are leaking out, and there'll be more as the month rolls forward. And uh, let's get to what's new uh, in movies. You know, you can't see every movie that gets released, and this week, screening conflicts resulted in me missing my chance to catch Jumanji The Next Level, which is the sequel to the extremely successful and surprisingly entertaining revisit to the Jumanji in-game action comedy franchise. Uh, and uh, I also had to miss the third version of the holiday-themed slasher movie, Black Christmas. First was 74, then they redid it in 2006. A bunch of sorority girls as the potential victims of a crazed killer. You're on your own with those. Uh, but we do have some new movie reviews, and let's get to it. Bombshell is a constantly engaging, finely tuned, and sometimes sharply funny docudramedy about the women who brought down Fox News mogul Roger Ailes for sexual harassment, particularly two women. Those iconic and particular Fox News blondes were Megyn Kelly, played by Charlize Theron, and... Fox and Friends co-host Gretchen Carlson, played by Nicole Kidman. John Lithgow is appropriately slimy and porcine and as the pervy uh, Roger Ailes. Uh, here he's encased in some state-of-the-art prosthetics by, and I got to name check this guy, Kazuhiro Tsuji. This is the guy that did Gary Oldman's Winston Churchill makeup in Darkest Hour. And he also more subtly molded Theron and Kidman into close approximations of Kelly and Carlson. And, you know, the makeup is fantastic. The performances are good. Some of the impressions and character work are uncanny. Alana Eubach as the uh, lecture, uh, I, I can't even, I can't stand her, Janine Pirro. Uh, and the three, fem uh, three female leads, including Margot Kidder and Lithgow, uh, are just wonderful. Malcolm McDowell has a cameo as Fox Grand Poobah and Master Media Manipulator Rupert Murdoch. Uh, it, it, is it as good as another torn from yesterday's headlines docudramedy, The Big Short? No way. But still, the willful right-wing propagandizing that marked Fox News then and now and the sleaze that permeated the place under Ailes are very well depicted and, frankly, compelling to watch. Um, are there some fictionalized or composite characters? Yeah. Uh, Kate McKinnon plays a secret lefty lesbian working for the repugnant Bill O'Reilly. Uh, that's purportedly a representation of some similar types within the Fox stronghold. And the same goes for the more central figure, uh, Margot Robbie's ambitious blonde millennial evangelical, who does what she has to do to advance her career. Purportedly, uh, there were a number of women that were in the same situation. Bombshell does pop, even if it's pretty much a, a workmanlike inside look at corporate ugliness, unearthed and vilified in the Me Too era. Well directed by Jay Roach, normally known for comedies like Meet the Parents, although he did Trumbo, the biopic about black bald Hollywood screenwriter Dalton Trumbo. So he's, you know, he's at home in this sort of thing. And it was well written by uh, Charles Randolph, who also wrote, no surprise here, The Big Short. Yeah, you know what? This is worth watching on video if you get a chance to stream it. And it's not bad for theater viewing either. An interesting take on another story from the headlines is Richard Jewell, directed by old Calhan Clint Eastwood. This is the real-life story of security guard Jewell, the Georgia native who saved a lot of people when he found and reported the bomb that would eventually explode at a concert during the 1996 Atlanta Olympics. Despite his heroics, this large and seemingly law-abiding guy soon becomes the FBI's number one suspect in the bombing, and the newspapers and TV go wild with the accusation, screwing up Jewel's life. Uh, quite a few of the main characters in the movie are based on real people, starting with Jewel, his mother Bobby, and attorney Watson Bryant, who tries to protect Jewel from the unproven allegations of the FBI and the news media, especially 
an Atlanta newspaper reporter named Kathy Scruggs, here depicted as a very shady, self-aggrandizing person who broke the story of Jewel being a suspect. It's compelling stuff with some really solid performances from relative newcomer Paul Walter Hauser in the pivotal role of the staunch wannabe cop Jewel, Kathy Bates as his devoted mom, Sam Rockwell giving another ace character turn as a kind of a rage against the machine lawyer uh, who comes to uh, Jewel's help in spite of himself, it comes to like the guy. Uh, John Hamm as the lead FBI agent on the case, who is absolutely certain Jewel was the bomber, and Olivia Wilde as the seemingly wild, anything for a front page story uh, reporter Scruggs. That there are flaws here. They might be in the one dimensional media is evil, fake news depiction of the press at work. Uh, and the similarly damning presentation of the sneaky entrapment tactics used by the FBI agents investigating Jewel as legit or not, both of these elements of the movie reinforce what I must assume is Clint's embrace of the anti-press and anti-FBI attitudes of Trumpism with all its phony drain the swamp blather. But that doesn't stop me from thinking Richard Jewel is a decent and well-made movie. Okay, how about something I can unequivocally recommend? Um, I'm going to tout one of my favorite movies of the year, Uncut Gems. It's the latest from the f phenomenal movie-making brother team uh, of Josh and Benny Safdie, whose previous feature, Good Time, was one of my favorite movies of the year or so ago. Uncut Gems is low-budget, high-tension, darkly funny. It's a crime thriller about a New York City jeweler with a gambling problem, a failing marriage, and leg breakers on his tail due to all the money he owes. And holy Hanukkah, it stars Adam Sandler as Howard the jeweler. Howard regularly steals from Peter to pay Paul, calling his bookie, betting with cash he doesn't have, making a deal with an all-star NBA player for a giant blood opal to finance the bets, juggling family and mistress, and trying to avoid the thugs who want their cash. As all of this plays out in relentless fashion, you can't help but get more and more anxious. It's an edge of your seat thing that never lets up until the final seconds. The fact that Uncut Gems is so good is all the more astounding since the increasingly desperate Howard is played by Sandler in what is probably the best work of his career beyond any comedy turns or the previously acclaimed dramatic performance in Punch, uh, Punch Drunk Love. Uh, that sort of leaned on a few tried and true Sandlerisms. This is much more finely tuned and devoid of caricature. And what a cast the Safties have surrounded him with. Adina Menzel as his embittered wife, Judd Hirsch as his wary father, actual NBA all-star Kevin Garnett as himself, like uh, Lakeith Stanfield as uh, Howard's go-between with Garrett, and in a breakout performance, Julia Fox as Howard's mistress and Girl Friday. Uncut Gems is sharply shot, written, and acted, and it sparkles like a precious jewel. I was thrilled while watching it, exhausted when it was over, and thoroughly delighted. Let's wrap up briefly with A Hidden Life. As usual, the expert iconoclastic filmmaker Terrence Malick has fashioned a lengthy and gorgeous piece of cinema with his latest, A Hidden Life. And it's a biographical drama about the peril facing an Austrian farmer who refuses to fight for the Nazis in World War II. Whoa. The third of today's movies based on a true story. Well, what do you expect? I sense a trend, though. It stars August Deal as Franz Jägerstrader, uh, who is faced with the threat of execution for treason when he conscientiously ob objects to fighting for the Nazis. He leans on his religious faith and his devotion to his family to keep going, even though his wife and kids are vilified in their local town for refusing to join uh, in with the uh, Third Reich. A Hidden Life co-stars some European heavy hitters, including Michael Nyquist, Matthias Schoenertz, Jürgen Proctor now and the late Bruno Gantz, but even they can't outdo the beauty of the Tyrolean Alps. To be honest, its 180 minute, uh, minute length is daunting and requires patience, but it's extremely beautiful and very well acted. Uh, not one of my favorites from Malik, whose career has included high points like The New World, The Thin Red Line, etc., but A Hidden Life has an undeniable quiet power that rewards a viewer's patience. Mr. Bennett? No, nothing. I guess uh, all that came out this week was um, Ms. Maisel, Mrs. Maisel. Uh, third season. Eh. Eh. Oh, you got into it already? Oh, I, re I saw it all. Yeah. Wow. Uh, well, listen, if you're a sci-fi fan, The Expanse wait, wait, also you, dropped. You, you didn't get my, eh. 
I, mean, I heard you're mad. I mean, you know, I mean, I like the show very much. I think that did you uh, watch, she's fantastic. Did you, watch, did you watch the newest one? I did not. Not as yet. Uh, oh, it's all over the place. It's just all over the place. It has no um, anchor to it. It really. Well, <clears throat> I, you know, I, I have to say, I'm really most excited about the fourth season. It, it, it was so it was so bad, really, that, that Marjorie, who loves that show, couldn't get to the last episode. That's unheard of. Yeah. I can't imagine that a woman that doesn't like Mrs. Maisel didn't like this one. Oh wow! Uh, again, the Expanse, the hard sci-fi uh, series. Uh, back via streaming, uh, and it's season four, and that's the thing I'm most excited about. Well, good, because I, I haven't watched a single episode and don't intend to. All right, gotcha. Listen, yeah. you can check me out on Twitter at Culture Blaster and on Michael Snyder's Culture Blast page uh, in the Facebook and here on GabNet. Yeah, the Facebook, yes. Anyway, uh, thank you, Michael. Listen, that's Michael Snyder, and if you're uh, listening to us 24-7, uh, keep listening. If you want to hear his reviews again, you just go over to our uh, on-demand section. And stay tuned for more Gabnet 24-7. It's coming right up. <laughs>